Hey folks, Machine Repeat here. Uh, cool video I want to share. Uh, earlier this summer, I was up in uh, Thamesville, Ontario for a very special day. It was a 45th anniversary customer event, customer celebration for Carney Planters. Uh, Barry, Sandy, and Colleen, and the team up there at Carney Planters, great folks. We had an awesome day, huge turnout. Uh, and one of the cool things they did for the event, Barry invited uh, you know, some of his favorite Farm customers to bring their collection of tractors, trucks, and all kinds of cool stuff out to the event, to the dealership, Carney Planters there. And this fellow you're looking at, this is Bill Patterson from Ontario. And I had the chance to interview Bill. He brought uh, his collection of David Brown tractors, equipment, and that car you're looking at there, that's a 1997 Austin Martin DB7. Now, of course, David Brown is a very historic figure in the farm equipment world uh, going back over the last century, and uh, David Brown owned Austin Martin. So, yes, that's, you know, the car from the James Bond movies. And I tell you, Bill, Bill's father, I believe, became a, a David Brown dealer in Ontario in 1957. Bill worked for him for a time and then actually became a block man in Ontario for David Brown. And Bill was gracious enough to share some amazing stories, actually dealing with the man himself, David Brown. And then he walks us down uh, his line of beautiful items, including the DB7 car and the David Brown tractors and some other surprises. So let's go to that interview I did um, earlier this summer with Bill Patterson from Ontario about his uh, David Brown collection. Hey folks, Machine Repeat here. I'm up in Ontario today at a very cool event honoring 45 year anniversary for my friends at Carney Planners. Uh, great dealer, Barry and Sandy, and great, great uh, folks. And hey, we have a treat here, um, local guy, Bill Patterson. Now, folks, you're looking at that uh, David Brown collection. We're gonna, this is a guy you and your dad, Bill, back in the, what, fifth, late 50s? You were David Brown dealers here. Yes, dealer first. Okay. And uh, did your dad, what year did you guys get started, Bill? What was that? What year did you guys get started as a dealer? We started in 57. 57, okay. Started with David Brown in 60. It's and right Brown around first. the Chatham area here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And folks, we're, we're standing in front of Bill's amazing uh, DB7 Austin Martin, which the DB, of course, is for David Brown. Now, not everyone knows the history with Austin Martin, which, of course, is the James Bond car, right? Right. Now, Bill, you shared some amazing stories. we we got to walk people through this. But first, tell us about your car. It's a 97 model? That's a 97. Okay. DB7. Okay, it's a beautiful car. Uh, now, you were saying there's something unusual about the engine on this. The engine on this has no head gasket. So therefore, everyone built their machine together. Everyone is a different size, and this one to the thousands of a liter. Yeah, Bill was uh, showing me here, folks. You can show them. We'll hop in here, and there, there you go. 3.239 liters. So everyone is uh, kind of a spec job, huh? Yes, yes. Wow. And uh, now, don't. Your history with David Brown, the company, and the man, David Brown, goes back. Bill, can you can you tell us? So you were a young guy starting with your dad, yes, right? David Brown started in 1860. So that would have been David Brown's father. It was an uncle, actually. An uncle, okay. Yeah, handed down, but still the same family. In England? Yes. Okay. And they started building wooden gears for the textile industry wooden gears wooden gears wow and then they became one of the largest gear companies in the world gearing such things as the queen mary queen elizabeth ship toronto street cars wow gloucester pool now you you sold a lot of uh, david brown tractors here back in the day when well, you were we a young man a <laughs> bill is being very modest folks uh, won uh, worldwide awards selling David Brown tractors. Uh, now, so you started as a dealer with your dad and then a health problem, you became a block man. Yes, that's right. Okay, so how big was your territory you were covering? Uh, I, my first territory was in the north, okay. northern Ontario, and then it came back to London, to Windsor, down to Simcoe. Uh, okay. So, 
Okay, and your the stories you were sharing with me, Bill, about uh, David Brown's association with uh, Harry Ferguson. Yes, fascinating. Can you share yeah. some of that? Uh, Harry Ferguson um, decided to build a three-point hitch. We all take our hat off to him. Yep. Uh, there's eagle hitch and smart hitch and all kinds of hitches, but every tractor today has Harry Ferguson's identical hitch. Yep. Brown did not agree with his draft control. He said it's a cheating system. It'll plow shallow in the clay and deep in the sand and it'll ruin the ground and we're gonna need one and 200 horse tractors to clean this up. Hmm. Well, he was a little wrong there. I think we're up to 700 horse. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, they, right. But um, so Harry won out and went to Henry Ford and he built him a nine and Ford. Yep which was a very light little tractor, exactly what he wanted. And if we look to the left, we'll see what David Brown brought out. Okay. At the same time, a small tractor, but heavy. Small, but heavy. So it could pull the spring tooth. You didn't have to okay. rely on three point eight. Okay. Now, now Bill, uh, I understand at one point, David Brown himself, he came here and he, he kind of asked you like, how can we be better? Uh, David Brown uh, came to open the Farm Equipment Show in Toronto in 1959. Okay. And I was there, and uh, I was asked by the company to be interviewed with David Brown. Okay. Uh, and so he asked me, what can we do to improve? And at that time, we did not have power shift wheels. They were available, but the hub wouldn't fit the okay. David Brown. Okay, right. So in the next couple of months, we designed a plate that would go in. Wow. And uh, I got a pat on the back for that. Well, and a little bit more than a pat on the back, you found yourself actually in England. Yes. Okay, now this, this folks, this was, this story kind of blew me away, but you got invited, what was the term for it, the Queen's? The, the Queen, uh, in 1960, because of attachments he made for the planes and the warships with gears, and several things, uh, and plus the sale of tractors. And the queen said she wanted to put on a seven course dinner with the main course being pheasant nice. at the Queen's Guild Hall for anyone that contributed to David Brown's success. Hmm. And in June of 1960, my boss came to me and said, Bill, you have been selected to represent Canada at the Queen's Guild Hall wow. for David Brown. And how, so, this 1960 or how old, Bill? I was 28 years old. 28 years old. So you go across the pond, and this Queen's Hall Guild dinner, you said you had your best suit and you're all ready to go. Yeah. But? But that wasn't good enough for the Queen's Guild Hall. <laughs> okay. So what happened? The Queen has a rental suit for people that attend functions for the Queen. Okay. So we rented... I called it a monkey suit, but it was a fine set of tucks. Everything but our shorts, our socks, our shoes, our bow ties. Everything. Everybody looked the same? Everybody looked identical. Wow. So you go to this dinner, you're all dressed up in the monkey suit there looking. And uh, now walk us through this because as you enter the hall, this is a very, very formal occasion. So what happened then? So I was frisked by a bobby, half show, half for real. You sure didn't have a jackknife with you. Yep. He led me to another bobby who also frisked me. Yep. Led me, and that gentleman asked me my name and the country I was representing. Yep. He took me up to a fellow in a bright red suit at the entrance to the hall where the seven course meal was prepared. Yep. And hammered his staff on the floor three times and said, Attention! Bill Patterson will now be entering the Guild Hall. 26-year-old Bill Patterson, here David he comes. Brown, Canada. <laughs> While I entered and shook hands with the Queen's Lords, mm. a gentleman in a yellow suit in a balcony played O Canada on his violin. Oh my gosh. How did you feel as that was... Taking, or thinking back now, what are your thoughts? Uh, when I, I can believe it, hardly believe it happened yeah. today. Yeah. 
at the time 28 years old where's the dancing girls where's the music <laughs> <laughs> and queen elizabeth was a young very young queen then. Very young yeah. queen then. Right. Yeah. so wow. it, it was a highlight of my life and but they were honoring david brown for his not just on the farm side agricultural tractors but he did a lot of work with aircraft during world war ii uh, he he did inventions for aircraft and uh, designed the crawler that both tracks drove at all times mm. to get the planes on. So he did many things for the Queen. Right, right. And now we're standing in front of uh, your Austin Martin. But if we, if we, if I could prompt you to tell another story from the '60s, so people remember, you know, the James Bond car. Yes. And Goldfinger in particular. Yes. When that movie came out, tell us that story about what happened in Toronto. When the movie came out and was made, if I back up a little, um, they chose David Brown because David Brown owned Aston Martin, a very sporty, quick-moving car. And they wanted a car with lots of tricks and lots of... Then they wanted tricks on it. And David Brown said, my Aston Martin engineers can't handle that, but my David Brown engineers know how to make gears and hydraulic rams and loaders and farm equipment. They'll put the trick. So the car was a 50% David Brown tractor. Wow. Aston Martin car. So when people are watching Goldfinger, they need to know that that's David Brown, a uh, young uh, yes. tractor engineers off the farm that made that thing do what that's it was. That's right. That is cool. So David had it brought. He never sold the car in the movie. He leased it. Okay. And kept it for publicity. Sure. So he had it brought to the Toronto Farm Show when the movie was on. Okay. And uh, I waited to look after the gentleman that drove it. Sure. And he said, if you don't tell anybody for 30 years, <laughs> I'll let you drive the James Bond car. Oh, nice. So I sat in the seat and went 500 feet or wow. no on the road, but it was still quite a thrill to sit wow. in that seat. Yeah, one of the most famous cars in the, in the world. Well, one of the most famous cars in the world. Yeah. And, uh, of course, I didn't lay any rubber, which I could have. <laughs> you probably wanted to, but... Uh, I probably wanted to. Oh, but. that is priceless. What yeah. now, now, folks, uh, the folks at Carney Planners here invited their great customer base and friends to bring in vintage tractors and vehicles, and, and Bill was kind enough to bring some of his David Browns. Bill, can you walk us through your collection here? Yes, okay. thank you. And is this, is this your collection, or do you have, do you have more at home, or...? We have another 20 at home. Another 20, okay, <laughs> that's good. So here we have- We have a, most models. Most models, okay. This is a 2D, a 55 model? Yeah. Okay. So David Brown building its own engine. Yep. Uh, this got a two cylinders, three and five eighths. The big one has six cylinders, three and five eighths. And the 950 that I don't have here had four cylinders, three and five eighths. So we okay. build their own engine. They compromise to make parts sure service simple yeah so so did you sell some 2d's back in the day here did you sell some 2d's back in the day in ontario oh, yeah. they weren't a lot sold they were sold for gardening growing carrots right the holland marsh uh, near toronto they okay. grow a lot of uh, okay and, and uh, an interesting oh, thing is this does not have hydraulic this is an airlift airlift okay so the pipe frame is the reservoir for the air okay. and then if you had a flat tire you just plug it in the side and pump it up there you go so. innovation uh, across all david brown products seems like a theme yeah to me always thinking of uh, different ways to do things it seems like yeah they did things and the the next one that's okay. a vak1 Vehicle oh. Agriculture Kerosene. Okay. First what, model. What year is it? That is 1940, this one. It 40. came out in 39, but it's identical. Okay. And that's when the 9 and 4 come in. Ah. This was David Brown's version of a heavier tractor. He wanted heavier. Yeah, and Harry whole, Ferguson wanted lighter. Yeah. The, uh, be the 9 and 4. Okay. Come out in 39. And this came out in 39. Well, it's beautiful. Bill, where did, now where did you find it? Did you pick it up at uh, another... A friend of mine that worked with David Brown brought it from two scrapyards huh? in England. Okay. And he never got to 
doing anything with it. So I bought the pieces at his sale. Okay. And we put it together. And you made, uh, you brought it back to life that you made, you know, a piece of history there. Bill. Yeah. That's it, fantastic. It, uh, it does not have a starter. Okay. It was wartime, uh, just before the war. Right. So uh, I could put a starter on it, but I kind of like leaving it. Yeah. Authentic. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And it runs well. Okay. And next, and again, what was the model on? That was a VAK-1? VAK-1. Vehicle okay. Agriculture Kerosene. Kerosene. If you notice, it has two tanks. Yep. Start on gas, okay. run on kerosene. And next to it, uh, Bill, we have that, a 50D. the biggest tractor ever made in England at the time. Mm. And uh, something of interest, to make it very, very special when they showed it, check the steering wheel. It had sports and Aston Martin DB5 steering wheel. Because David owned Aston Martin, he wanted to make that special special. That is pretty special. Oh, well, that special. is. When I was touring the president of the Aston Martin Club of North America, I said, if you get on the seat, he said, no, I don't farm, Bill, I don't run. I yeah. said, you just might. Just trust me. Trust me. You're, you're going to recognize something. He put his hands there and said, oh, my goodness, Bill. An Aston Martin DB5 steering wheel. That's the same steering wheel that the Bond movie had. Wow. So what, what year is this, 50D? 56. It's 56. Folks, if, you never, if you've never had the chance, I mean, there you go right so, there. Pretty cool. A beautiful tractor, Bill. Yeah, it, it's a... Uh, it's a nice tractor. Did you have to restore this one as well? Oh, completely. It was in a bush, and they cut everything off and running a sawmill. Huh? And okay. It was bad, but we we did it right through. Now, David Brown crawler. Man, what this is an interesting rig. Tell us about it. Yeah, uh, the, the crawler. For a long time, I thought David Brown designed the driving system that I told you about. Yep. But it was actually another company in 1921 and we called Cleatrack. Yep. And uh, Cleatrack engineered and they put it in little small dozers, but then it never went anywhere. And David Brown bought from Cleatrack okay. the patent. So it is a controlled differential, mm. which means it has crown and then planetary gears and a brake band so both tracks are always driving mm. and you were saying uh back in the day that what was the issue with most crawlers most crawlers had two clutches clutch for each track yeah, yeah. and a brake for each track so to really move quickly you pulled the clutch put on the brake you're dragging one and you're stuck right this one came out both tracks drive at all times Hmm. Piece of history, folks. David Brown, 30 TD. 30 TD. 30 was the size, track layer was the T, and D is diesel. 30 TD. That's beautiful. Where did you find this one? This one I found in Essex, Ontario. Okay. And crack block, track falling off. Yeah. Well, again, Bill, you rescued it. You brought it back to life. It's original glory. Everything about it is like new. It'll start up and run this. Oh, it's a that's vacuum fabulous. Vacuum operated diesel pump. Vacuum operated diesel pump. Yeah, not a mechanical. No. But mm. vacuum. Innovation at every turn. And now this one really caught my eye when I walked in here. Well, this is one in the world. Is this a prototype that was never produced? It's a prototype okay. that never got produced. Okay. And it's a 950 with uh It's a, a 950 tractor that they split in two and then put extra gearing. And uh, in, in England, uh, the club in England wanted to see it in action. So we actually on the farm dug down to a main and tiled. And then I have another dozer at home with a blade. Okay. And we used the David Brown blade to backfill. Nice. Rather unique. 
he said when he built it, you see this swirl on here? He said, I want this as a tool that I can lay cable, lay water pipes. And when I do that, I'm going to put this right down and scrape every ounce of dirt away so that you can get down in the trench and put it in. And when I go out to do field tile, I'm going to raise this up and maybe put a little in or a lot. So it was a combination tiling and a trencher, and I thought that was quite brilliant. Mm. Yeah, that is. Very clever. Man. And what year was this, uh, the prototype the, the built? The tractor is a 1940, 59. 59, sorry. okay. 1959. Okay. And he took like five years design and right. build them. And, and Bill, how did, you, how did you come to own it? When I was district manager for David Brown, uh, he was a dealer of mine. The John, he sold John Deere's and David Brown's. Okay. And uh, so uh, I got to know him real well, and we worked back and forth getting this thing built. When wow. he died, his wife called and said, you were part builder of this before he died. He wants you to that is awesome. And, and Bill, do you, you take your collection to many shows around the country in Canada? I do a few. Uh, I'm doing more tours at home. Okay. Uh, because we can do all 50 or 60 tractors at our place, uh, 14 or 18 right. rather rare cars. Well, Bill, as you think back, you were a young guy starting in 1957 with your dad in the business. Uh, looking back over your life and career, association with David Brown here we stand today what what are what are your thoughts about uh, your uh, life my thoughts are every day was a good day every day is a gift and a blessing right every day was a blessing I didn't mm. have a bad day awesome yeah okay now while I have you here Bill advice you would have for young people looking to get into the business of farm equipment maybe go work for a big company an engineer but what advice would you have to them? Don't forget to work on your own. Get all the education you can get, but be inventive and always thinking, how can we do a little better? I love that. And you worked with and knew David Brown. Yes. So, no, I'm hoping that in 50 years, people might be watching this YouTube video and would be... You know, maybe you've heard of David Brown, but what would you tell people? What made him tick? What made him special? What special name? What made him special? What made him David Brown? He was very inventive, like when he made a gearbox for the planes to shift the props into fast gear before turbo problems and such. Save all those lives. To come up with the dozer that would put everybody else was happy with clutches and brakes. He was not happy with that, so he he just did things a little better. He was always looking to improve. But never satisfied. Yeah. So awesome. Uh, well, that is, Bill it has been such a treat uh, to hear your, the history with David Brown, the company, and your your father on the dealership side. Thank you so much for showing us your amazing collection. And uh, again, what a treat. Thank you much, Bill. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.